Here we are for the part 5 and as you can see here there is a huge progress compared to previous part and we will be focusing on the capturing rear ideations and this will be the result that we will end up and let's get to it right away. Um, we will begin with uh, roughly separating the uh, plastic material from the body. I was assuming according to the rear view sketch these surfaces I selected and I have assigned another material so that we can differentiate with the body color and the plastic uh, parts uh, in a much more uh, in a better way and as you can see here I create some kind of chamferish surface over here by using a draft tool and normal selected as type and yeah for the front uh, we'll leave as well <clears throat> yeah let's see what we have we can yeah we will we will um, change our wheel arc surfaces uh, according to that uh, chamfer and I am uh, realigning the position uh, of the surfaces by um, uh, by using the extra CV rows like two or three CV rows depends on the continue continuity um, over there and in addition to that we will add one more vertical uh, chamfer uh, which also uh, we that that will belong to the um, body color part as we can clearly see on the sketch yeah, this is pretty much uh, gathering the surfaces together according to that change. And I was thinking in the previous steps that uh, after implementing this um, body um, plastic uh, material, we will kind of have chance to uh, make make the wheel arc uh, surfaces in a much more volumetric uh, way. That change will pop up the uh, wheel arch and the round roundness of that surface because it was it, it used to it it used to so flat so straight uh, in the previous uh, part but right now what we end up with will be much more roundish um, surface layout when it comes to the wheel arch so I am just slightly implementing the changes to the front. Uh, we'll lip as well Position aligning uh, while partial option is open I'm extending the that the chamfer uh, through whole uh, wheel lip And simply aligning the rest of the surface according to that. Yeah If you if you watched until here, you probably realized we are doing pretty much the same things. Because I mean the the real um, the real work case scenario is just the same as you see on on the screen at the moment. You are just uh, adopting rest of the surface according to the one particular change, and which is pretty much like um you are getting used to it you are getting used to the surface methodology uh, that you created by solving thousands of problems and implementing the design changes to that um surfaces it's not that taking time in um, it's rather faster than it's used to be because we have pretty much the methodology over there already standing and we are building on top of it so that is why uh, our jobs are easier than before we will also um, we will also implement this same method for the front wheel arch as well but considering this video is taking huge amount of time um, like 40 minutes long we will be we will be building the rear view 
as much as we can let's say um yeah i'm just checking the intersection how that would look like yeah we just gotta pull some cvs towards to us because there is considerably bigger gap between we kind of tend to minimize it for the next for the next phase of the side body works i don't know maybe we we in the, in the next videos i don't know uh, how do i feel like but we might also need to change that main side uh body surface that i untrimmed right now we might even change that because that also happens in the real time work case scenario we were just building that uh, out of our head and then it's like i i begin to i begin to kind of not like me yeah there's a positional continuity issue over there i pulled my information window in and i'm selecting both cvs and looking the coordinates of them and i found that the uh, second row of the first cv column is not positional so i have fixed it and uh, move that information window to my second CV. It is again, I told it before, but um, good to repeat that maybe. It is crucial to have more than one screen because if you have only one screen, uh, you will probably dealing with the uh, menus and tabs walking around your screen and blocking your um, modeling area, let's say. So that is why even the cheapest ones uh, would work get it's better to get second screen and pull um, um, push over the uh, tabs and other window segments to that second screen yeah i will be g1 aligning that surface so that transitional lead kind of it that curve over there the intersection of the chamfer will kind of washing out through the record panel over there and the rear um surface over there it's kind of it'll be tangent so it's kind of washing out yeah not not that bad i was really i was really happy with uh what uh, what i reach until until the end of this uh, session because we have done huge amount of changes so as you can see on the screen this is my kind of uh, second screen setup one part of the second screen setup and the other part is about the shading shaders the materials and so on maybe we can do another video about tearing down my preference set that would be helpful maybe yeah just realigning that surfaces again the good thing about NURBS modeling from sketch to final phase uh, the good the, the good thing about that is it really makes you get faster and being uh, fast uh, when it comes to the surface modeling or any type of modeling is a huge plus plus skill set being fast is crucial it's so important Otherwise, no, no one, no one would like to watch you uh, going through the um, tool set, the palette, looking for one specific tool. It's just so much painful to see. It is always better to uh, get faster and faster every day with the tools that you use and creating hot keys uh, and kind of shortcuts that you can use um, is really crucial and important because um, time it's i mean in in the design studios uh, projects are all about timing yeah time is really important both for the holistic way of uh, looking through the project or your personal um for your personal uh mindset let's say if if you are fast enough to deliver um, the um, requirements of that particular job and you will probably have the rest of your rest of the time for yourself managing managing the time is one of the important skill set of uh, 
one can have as a 3D model. Yeah, just aligning those surfaces again. We, we're gonna spend our years on that. So I leave you guys here to watch rest of the um, CV massaging and the re wrestling, let's say, so to say. And um, yeah, if if any other things that I should mention uh, comes around, I will jump right back in. Until then, enjoy watching.
Yeah, you see um, we changed a lot of uh, surface layout over there. Um, I was changing my mind, uh, thinking that I'm not be able to reach that uh, design sketch with that um, with those uh, patch layout. But this is this is not right as well. This this seems wrong as soon as I um, look at the highlights and the sketch over there. It shouldn't. It shouldn't rotate uh, from the intersection it should go all along the way of uh, reaching until the wheel uh, wheel lip yeah so again uh, i will be changing that connection and i to, to do that of course i will be changing that main uh, surface over there the big one and i'm thinking it through how to connect those two it's just yeah it jumped right down and create that fillet. When you feel like you stuck somewhere, you got no way uh, to like understand or develop the model. You just gotta jump somewhere else and develop and improve that those surfaces, those areas, and then you can jump back. As I was uh, filleting down there, I kind of realized that if I push back. Uh, Pull back that surface until it intersect with the uh, chamfer over there and between I can create a square and then it seems like if I implement big uh, fillet over there actually blend surface sometimes fillet tools uh, don't work I just uh, add the curve on surface by using insert tool and then using free from blend between 
and looking at the sketch at the same time it should it should be bigger than that seems like yeah it should be bigger than that but yeah before realizing that uh, i also duplicate that curve and project normal and trim that out for the other surface the same and i'll do free from blend over there again pretty much a similar uh, ending uh, as it was before but then i think like this is not gonna be working and i don't even understand why it did something like that uh, patch layout and i square things up this is cleaner yeah We should, we should carry that hard edge through the wheel lip. Yeah, I will, I'm using tubular offset to make that um, blend bigger than it is right now because it kind of feels like it should be bigger because this is too sharp. Again, duplicating curve and moving that projecting normal and then trimming the surface out I guess yeah I will be using freeform blend and it does the weird, weirdest thing again so I realign that edge as G2 yeah we gotta change that as well it should go all the way down yeah Sometimes you do the things just to experiment and see uh, how it kind of reacts, how the surfaces react to your changes. Yeah. There is a continuity issue over there, so I trim convert the surface and then uh, realign. The reason the color is constantly changing uh, uh, on my second screen um, in the shader uh, tab, I have clicked uh, the gray. Uh, color or the uh, pink color uh, and then if I create another surface it will be applying that yeah color set to that surface that that is why it was constantly changing because the other color was selected over there <clears throat> yeah the same method I'm just extending the fillet let's say the, the blend between yes yeah, since free from blend tool didn't work before don't need to try that out again don't forget to save your file of course always remind yourself that i have aligned the curve and project normal trim that out and square things up yeah g2 for both sides positional for the other sides and this looks better actually smaller fillet will be placed in between so we will kind of have something like on the sketch. That shoulder on the sketch is uh, actually actually um, rounder than what we have. But the thing is, it is it seems like it is exaggerated a little bit, or uh, it it is not uh, connected to the side body as smooth as what we have here. Instead, it has a smaller fillet also between wheel arch and the side side body, kind of kind of collapsing through that. Maybe we need uh, more opinion about it. I don't know. I don't know what you think. Or you can even you can even send me your um, latest status of the model so that we can yeah work. Um, go go through together maybe we can do another episode going through the models yeah why not free advice over here <laughs> yeah, i'm just trying to get the uh, volume over there on the front it's just blocking out the material wise let's say the surface is just straight and i will be i will be coloring that yeah 
we will get deeper into into that detail but for now this is this is working quite well actually yeah when i applied filter over there it's just not looking good and i convert um untrim that surface and and project another curve and i will apply free from blend with me we've used free from blend uh, for this episode too much yeah because we get into the secondary surfaces which this one was one of them maybe we i don't know i didn't want to spend too much time on it because we gotta uh, finish the series at some point yeah if we we care too many things uh, we will never be finishing the series so it's like i kind of feel like it is it requires more um attention but i kind of keep going on just because i got more episodes to record yeah and this one is fairly longer uh, than before and compared to the previous uh, parts episodes as well because this is i mean like i don't know like four hour or three hour uh, recording time i have it i mean we, we we are watching it two times faster than it is so it is like 18 80 minutes of time of watch time actually but i was like modeling more than that twice maybe twice than that and then kind of feeling like it's not gonna work and delete that record and redo the things again so that is why you gotta keep pushing yeah you gotta you gotta creating more I will be also um, applying the placeholder uh, tail light over there. It'll be there just to be kind of emphasize the rear graphic. And the rear diffuser. Was it called diffuser? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we will be focusing on rear diffuser to pretty much wrap up the rear view. Yeah, this is this part will be pretty much trimming changing the main surfaces it's just the um, yeah it, it was actually I have created that one actually um, faster than I was thinking and it was kind of good case study that rear diffuser alone itself it was nice to experiment as you can see we are kind of not following the um, side view anymore because um, there are so many things uh, different uh, with that sketch and the rear quarter view sketch which that one is much more precise and telling us more than uh, what side view telling so I'm just trying to capture the yeah that surface methodology over there and yeah, this this part this this part is um, really really cool part. I'm just trim converted that surface. I have duplicated it before, and I think like this is too steep. Yeah, it's just too much, too steep. It kind of differs what uh, differs between the sketch. It's too steep. It's not that much it's like 45 60 degrees in the sketch but it's like closer to 90 what we have so it means we gotta we gotta change that main surfaces uh, when it comes to rear diffuser so yeah enjoy enjoy the rest 
uh, I will be coming back after kind of wrapping up the rear review. Yeah?
yeah guys thank you for uh, watching until here and keeping up with me always and let me know what you think uh, let me also know if you kind of um, reach that level uh, on your projects i don't know if you are doing together with me but yeah thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe like and uh, comment below and see you on the next one bye bye